If you're planning something, I'll always be a step ahead of you. I can see everything in your eyes. It's what's behind the eyes that counts. This reboot came to be because Dominic Purcell and myself wound up working together on another show playing completely different characters. Wentworth and I were doing a guest roles on The Flash, and it was just like we had never stopped working with one another. We had a great time, and we started talking about a prison break and reminiscing, and out of that conversation came this idea that there might be more to the story. We decided to go to Fox. It turns out they'd been having a similar conversation on their own, and the timing was right. And action! We've got Paul Schering, who is spearheading these new nine episodes, and he originated the show, so it's got his taste and sensibility and, and tone. What appealed to me about bringing the show back is that the culture of TV has changed in the last decade in terms of limited runs having really come into their ascendancy and everyone's willing to make them now and people are willing to watch them. You know, what's nice about the close-ended story is that it's just non-stop thrills, non-stop mystery and, and character moments. There's not a wasted drop of drama is what I'm trying to say. Just like the butterfly's wings. This piece of gum is gonna start a sequence of events that will finish on the other side of the world. This reboot really feels topical. It feels like it's happening out there in the world today. At the same time, it's a continuation of the same themes that worked so well the first time around. Family, sacrifice, loyalty, and brotherhood. Paul's idea was to go back to kind of what made season one great. Let's go. Obviously, there's a prison break element to that, but there's also the secret plans of figuring out what Michael's up to, and then the fun of the old fan favorites, and then introducing a whole bunch of new characters who are involved for mysterious reasons. To me, and one of the allures of season one of Prison Break was that the protagonist himself was a mystery, because we didn't understand his agenda and what's the tattoo and who had he set up outside the prison before he effected this escape. And so coming back to do this again, we restart that, which is to say, who is Michael? Why the hell is he alive? What's he doing here, right? And the whole first half of the season is unpeeling that. Your brother's dead, thank you. Where is he dead? Where's the body? Then why did he leave? If he's been out there for all of these years, why did he abandon his own son? Full disclosure, this is the story about a man that had disappeared for seven years off the grid in a far off land, and ultimately that wants to get home to his wife and his unseen kid. And I said, but wait, I think I know this story. That's Odysseus. One of Paul's early exciting ideas was he recognized that it's the Odyssey. It is the story of a guy who has to get back to his wife and his kid, and she's in Ithaca, New York in this one, instead of Ithaca in the Mediterranean. And he starts in Ogygia, which is the island that Odysseus was on, and he has to escape. He has to fight his way out of the city, across the desert. He has to get to Greece. Then he's on a cargo ship, and then finally finds a way home. It's incredibly ambitious. I mean, it's like we're making a movie. Damn it! I gotta get home, Link. Can't spend another two weeks on a cargo ship. Coming back to this project was like riding a bike. I did not have time to go back and watch all 81 episodes from the original series, so I had to trust that the character and the story still lived in me somewhere. And my very first scene, I'm behind bars, Dominic's on the other side, and it was just like old times. Just looking into his eyes was enough to ground me in the who am I of these characters. Who the hell is this guy? He's my brother. He's my brother. I can't believe it. I've always loved Lincoln, the character. He's a hard ass with a hard gold. I mean, Wentworth calls, well, Wentworth calls me a tank with a tender heart. And so I use that for Lincoln. He's a tank with a tender heart. Lincoln and Michael are the heart of the show. They always have been. But when Lincoln meets up with Michael again, he discovers that Michael has created for himself a, a surrogate family. I'm sorry I hit you. I can explain. Can you explain why you were going to let that man kill me? I wouldn't have let him kill you. 
You sure seem to be chums with the head of ISIL, friend. Didn't know you participate in these conversations, Ja. Only when they're interesting. Some of the prominent new characters are prison mates of Michael's. One of them particularly is a young firebrand named Whip. You co-cock me, I end you. I feel like there's a real brotherly relationship between Wentworth and I and, and Dom, and it's a very loving set. When you come onto something like this, it's similar to you know going to a party. You know, what's the vibe going to be like? Is it going to be something where you know magic can happen? And the chemistry that we have is sort of equating to what you see on screen as well. It's an incredible bonding experience, living together for three weeks and being in crazy situations. And I think that will be reflected in the show. Yeah, it's very brotherly. We're just kind of looking out for each other. And it's been a great learning experience for me. I'm working with very talented actors. And I feel like after this experience, hopefully I'll be a, a better actor myself. All the things that mystify me in this world since I've been released is that kale is the rage. Kale. When I was conceiving this, my thought was, it needs to be a mix of the old and the new, so certainly we have new characters, but you'll see C-Note. You'll see Teabag. You'll see Kellerman. You'll see Sucre. Beanbag has been First of all, it's been amazing. The very first scene that I shot with Went, it's when I see him for the first time. That was no acting. It was really emotional to see my best friend that I hadn't seen in so long. The reunions were so fun and intense and memorable to shoot. There was a lot as an actor to sink my teeth into. I was a little concerned. I could cry like that. I'm a big old baby when it, when it comes to sentimental stuff. And I thought, oh, I'm going to see everybody. I'm going to be like, oh, you know what's it? And it wasn't that at all. It's been a bunch of actors who I think were all on the same page going, I want to honor what the characters are, but I also want to take them in a new direction. You can't just reheat the old show. You, you know, seven years have passed, and you know, what's different about them now? And each person has evolved into new places in their life. And yet, interestingly enough, in their own kind of way, they can help the larger epic unfold. They can help Michael return home. Behold the villain. When Paul Schuring told me that this whole series is based on Homer's The Odyssey, that it's the hero's journey, and there would be a character named Poseidon who was torturing him all the way, and you, Mark, are gonna play Poseidon. I'm like, huh, that sounds pretty cool. Mark is somebody who I've been a fan of since Royal Pains. I've always thought he was a really talented guy, and one of the fun things about this was kind of, can he be the evil guy? Michael didn't kill Harlan Gaines. He had no motive. Shut up. He's the one with the motive. Harlan Gaines was your CIA director, and he was looking into Jacob. He was going to put him in prison. <laughs> I've played so many menches, so many good guys. So yeah, on the one hand, it's horrible to depict violence, especially against women. On the other hand, to dip my toes in the water of this strain of evil and darkness was fun and a change from playing the nicest doctor on television. The canvas that we're using is the entire world. I mean, literally, it, it spans, you know, from the Middle East to Europe to Africa to the Atlantic Ocean. You know, we're not going to shoot this on a soundstage in some lot in L.A. We're in Warzazat, Morocco, and we're shooting it uh, to pretend like it's Yemen, uh, war-torn Sana'a, Yemen. Morocco was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I had a great time. It's a beautiful country. The show is very, very, very popular there. Um, there's literally no one who has not seen Prison Break. And going to these various places, actually shooting in Morocco for Yemen, gives the show a look and a flavor that I don't think we could have achieved on a soundstage somewhere in Vancouver, although we've done our best. <laughs> For me, it was very special because I am Moroccan. My grandparents were born and raised in Morocco, and they started their family in Morocco. And when I was first introduced to this project, I was like, sign me up. standing outside a technical school here in Warzazat that we've turned into a prison. First up is we're doing a, just some establishing shots from a drone camera. 
to simulate like an aerial point of view of the prison. This is iconic because in the original series of Prison Break, there was a classic image that flew over a guard tower looking down at the prison yard at an actual prison in Chicago. So this is our version of that since now we're in quote unquote Yemen. This is Vila and Marco from a company called Helicam in Finland. They've been brought here to be our drone team. It's basically two guy operation, so Marco is piloting and I have a similar control that I control the camera. So the camera is completely independent, so I can pan and tilt. We have a live HD link, so uh, we and the director sees the live image, so we can control the camera from the side. One of the challenges of this season of Prison Break is you know, when you're filming closer to the equator, the sun can go very quickly. And we have very intricate, very specific scenes that are a mixture of drama and action. So with the sun going down fast, you don't have time to make a mistake. You don't have time to try something else. You really got to kind of go for it. Shooting in Morocco has been absolutely fantastic, but we're shooting uh, a lot of the interiors in Vancouver, which actually look gorgeous, and I would challenge fans to figure out the differences. So here we are in beautiful Vancouver, in the prison. This is where the guards normally are. So they watch us from up here, whilst all the prisoners are down in this huge courtyard down here. Luca, our production designer, is incredibly talented, and he's created these amazing environments and sets in Vancouver, and so we have a lot of stuff where our characters will be running through war-torn Yemen, which is actually Morocco, and then they run into a building, and then they're actually in Vancouver, and uh, they do their dramatic scene there. What are they saying? The entire army of ISIL just declared war on us. It's very intense to watch a show and then to realize, oh, you're about to hyperspace yourself into that world. And I'm so lucky I got to have scenes with Lincoln Burroughs, with Michael Schofield, and with, of course, Sarah Schofield. I watched Prison Break when I was just starting out in the business, and I remember thinking to myself, wow, that would be amazing to be a part of a show like that. It's an honor, really. I mean, when I'm interviewed by journalists, I'm reminded of how much of an impact it's actually made. There's been a lot to say. It's been crazy to shoot, and I think it will be equally crazy and enjoyable to watch.